And I understand Ms. Ryers is not here today. Okay. Church. Okay. So we will receive as information Mrs. Allen's presentation. Okay. Thank you. Good morning to everyone. Good morning. I want to begin my presentation with um, um, yes. showing this picture that was in the paper this morning. Had a wonderful time on last evening with um, a number of MPS students who were um, on stage, their performance and their character and the whole nine yards was on stage last night. Carver's uh, Sean Hamilton uh, received a, a Hitchcock Award and, and we were really pleased about that. Um, he uh, did very well in his uh, acceptance of this award last night. Uh, also, there was an event at Carver where our uh, Carver High School had a performance that went on last night and I hear that it went very well. Speaking. Oh, you went to the elementary ones. Okay, all right. Um, this is a good segue into why we're here today. Um, I think my conversation with Mr. Porterfield recently was the along the lines of every student needing something to carry them through. And um, for this young man, it was the sports area, and he, he was great in that. But for other children, they have a little bit of difficulty finding just the right thing that will help them to make it through to the other side of uh, becoming a go. This work session is scheduled to give us an opportunity to take a look at our Montgomery Public School Career and Technical Education Program to prepare us, the board, and me as superintendent for decision making around what's going to be best for our students. And this is important, and I'll keep saying this because tech, career and technical education is a doorway to opportunities truly for all students uh, because even students who have plans to one day go to college, the career and technical education pieces are can be valuable to them uh, any kind of technical education whether it's knowledge or skills it can benefit any student at any time it just so happens that some of our students will stop right there with that technical education piece and that's fine uh, the others will be able to apply the knowledge in, in some other way in their profession so today I've uh, asked Dr. Philip Cleveland from the uh, State Department of Education over the Career and Technical Education Programs to come and have a conversation with us. Uh, Mr. Dotson is here with his background and Jabril White with her um, being the director of our program. And we're just going to talk about where is a good place to head with our programs. And we're talking career and technical education. We're going to hit on different aspects of this program. And, um, but we're talking generally about the programs, and then we'll get to some specifics at a later time. To further cement the purpose behind our being here, I want you to uh, grab your highlighter and find a document in your packet that looks like this. It's an article that's hot off the press. I sat down at my computer about 9.30 this morning and this article came up and I thought, how great is that? Um, because we're going to be talking about this and I went through and I highlighted a couple of things. You can have the opportunity to read the whole thing but I want to highlight, I want you to highlight the things that I saw and uh, then you can go back and, and read the whole thing later. If you look on that first page in the second paragraph uh, and the third line, you will see where uh, the statement begins, high skilled workers are necessary for states to compete in a global economy. States must produce greater numbers of individuals 
holding industry recognized certificates to fill labor market gaps, including in high wage, high demand jobs. Also, the, um, the statement that's highlighted apart from that, um, states must produce greater numbers of individuals holding industry recognized certificates to fill labor market gains gaps rather that same statement is is there on that page turn the page please and at the very top of the page where it starts and the governors will you highlight that for me and the governors in many states have made clear that CTE and workforce development remain top priorities in 2014 this year State of the state addresses in 18 states and the District of Columbia included proposed initiatives or budget increases to expand or enhance the quality of career counseling, CTE, and our workforce development programs. Uh, down to the middle of the page where it talks about leading thinkers and research groups, if you would highlight that, and those three things that are so associated with you. We're trying to help, number one, students understand the demand for specific kinds of education and training. Trying to help educators reform their programs to better serve their students. Mm -hmm. That's what we're doing right now. That's why we're involved in this conversation. And then, of course, employees have to find the workers they need, and we're going to be preparing them for them. Uh, the second bullet in the next piece uh, talks about how we need to be able to blend high school and post-secondary learning opportunities. Turn the page. And we're going down to pass the first second, third, down to the fourth paragraph where you see Alabama legislation. Alabama legislation enacted this spring creates the Alabama Workforce Council. The council is charged with promoting collaboration across pre-kindergarten through 12, two and four year post-secondary institutions in business and industry. Um, Turn the page. That first sentence, aligning CTE offerings and workforce needs is a step in the right direction. But for many CTE fields, students will be unable to fill high demand job vacancies without either a post-secondary credential associate's degree or beyond. And the last paragraph in that, uh, when states offer high school students the opportunity to access post-secondary coursework, they allow students to try on careers, gain confidence in their ability to, to succeed in post-secondary and help identify pathways that may lead to a credential and career suited to their interest. And the last one, uh, beginning the second paragraph, some states are going beyond traditional dual enrollment structures to provide a role for business and industry partners in post-secondary course offerings for high school students. Okay, we're going to stop there. I'm going to ask you, though, to go back and read the whole thing because um, what I want us to do is broaden our understanding about what we're doing. What we're doing is not in a little nutshell here. It's bigger than that. It's huge, and it's into the future. It's not just for right now. It's into the future. So our thinking is going to have to go alongside that. As you begin to make decisions, your decision making is going to have to be big. It's going to have to be broad. It's, ha it's going to have to cover years down the road. We're not just talking about for right now. Um, 
this can will probably be some post Margaret Allen stuff, and that'll be great because it's not about the position here. And it's not about your positions either. It's about students and down the road and what you did to help all students get ready for their future. So I think this is a fabulous leadway that was hot off the press. Um, just received it this morning, but it, it just really did it for me to say that we're on the right road with looking at our career and technical education programs. Moving right along, I asked uh, Dr. Cleveland um, a month and a half or two months ago to come in and, and with Jabrail just go through all, everything that we have and just tell us what you see. And um, so he has done that, he and Jabrail have done that. They've looked at everything that we have our, the, you know, we've got three parts. We've got the, the uh, course offerings that are for any of the children. We've got the career academy, and then we have the technical high school. So we've got three things going for us right now. And he looked at all of those, and he's going to give us information uh, regarding what he saw. So any questions or any comments about this article or anything before we turn it over to Dr. Cleveland? Well, I'm, I'm, excuse you, me. First. you know, I've already stated that, um, you know, as far as education is concerned, the more programs that we can provide for our children, the better we're able to tap into their interests. So we must know that uh, every child has some talent and every child can learn. But if we can provide enough programs, so we can tap into their interests and certainly they will be successful. What we are doing today, we're looking at putting programs in place for a world that our children had not yet seen. All right. and, and certainly we're preparing them for the future such that um, they will be able to be sustain themselves, be independent individuals who are productive to society and not a burden to society. So, so we must keep marching and moving on. I just have, mostly have a question okay. for you and probably Ms. Frost. You know, we were going to go to that uh, press conference at Trent on Wednesday that was canceled because of the weather. What kind of dual enrollment was that going to be? Was that going to be something that played into the career tech, I'm assuming? Yeah. Did, do I just need to hold my course? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think we're going to get there. And because okay. um, we're, we're going to share, I'm going to share some more information with you. This, this really takes us to where we need to go simply because we're not the only ones sitting here looking at this. Um, two years looking at this, businesses are looking at this. Everybody is turning their attention toward career and technical education and toward the idea of what can we do together. And that's going to be another really important part. Um, of course, you know we have a few dual enrollment pieces going on. Not as many as a lot of districts our size. Um, you know, we, we don't have as many students as, as some. Uh, and of course, there are so many additional opportunities that we could probably uh, work with post, and I'm taking your stuff, uh, but anyway, um, that we can work with, with others to, um, you know, to provide for our students. Uh, and I have even had, I've had conversations with um, Monerlin from, uh, from Trenum, from uh, Dr. Heinrich, who is the uh, post-secondary chancellor. You know, we, we have been involved in conversations, and I'll tell you a little bit more about that later. But um, it's all going to play out real big, I think. And I, I'm just hoping that we can get in there and do our little part and join where we can to get the benefits of what everybody else is doing. Um, so on that note, Dr. Clayton. One other thing. Oh, okay. we, we, we must understand. See, we are living in a time where the baby boomers now or retire and, and and those vacancies that are left as far as the job market is concerned we need to write down be preparing students such that they can move right in and take those positions so certainly i believe we must continue to move in the direction that we're moving and certainly we will tap into the interests of more children whereas they can take on 
those uh, open uh, those vacancies that are going to be out there. Right. Before Dr. Cleveland starts, I'd like to say, yes, Melissa, that was good. Let me the purpose of it. And uh, Dr. Bice and the two year college chancellor, Dr. Hyman, have partnered to get a stronger niche on the dual enrollment. And the state legislature has mandated, uh, well, allocated so many thousands of dollars, or millions, millions, to, to technical education. Well, that's a good thing. That's yeah. exactly that's right. That's a good thing. <laughs> Well, good morning. Good morning. Um, it's my pleasure to be with you, and uh, I appreciate the opportunity to come and, and speak to you and then answer any questions and kind of have some dialogue. I want to first just tell you that a little bit about my background so that you know and can understand uh, where I've been and, and through the system. Um, I've, I had a short stint in industry, worked uh, in industry for some years, and then went into education and have been at the local school system as a teacher. Uh, administrator, principal, assistant principal, a career tech director, uh, spent four and a half years in the community college system and been on board with Dr. Bice now for approximately two years. So it kind of gives you my scope of background and experience. Um, I don't live in Montgomery and I tell people I was at, I've been at about four or five different board meetings and I always start out by saying I do not have a vested interest. I'm an outsider looking with the data and uh, uh, industry input. I have an opinion. Uh, and that's what I'm here to share with you today. So I really don't have anything to win or gain other than it's the right thing for kids. Uh, and that's what I'm about. So I, I want you to know that going in as well, that, that I really am excited about what I've seen, uh, opportunity that I'm gonna talk to you about, uh, to quite frankly be a model for not only this state, but across this nation. People, as the superintendent mentioned, they are doing things that my 19 years in education, I never thought I would see occur uh, in our state or in other states because there is a huge deficit in qualified employees. Uh, your industry partners, industry partners across this entire state are really at a desperate point uh, in finding qualified, um, trained, trained individuals that are credentialed, uh, may not be degreed, but they're credentialed based on industry standards. And that's what I want to talk to some about today. Um, so I want, to, I want to make that real clear to you that I, I'm here with, with no, um, no preconceived notions, no very little knowledge, quite frankly, of the, the school system itself and, and anything that has occurred to get, get us to this point today. I don't know a lot about any of that. So my job was to come in at the superintendent's request and help you all kind of frame your, your thought process, look at what you're currently offering, offer suggestions about programs to meet your industry needs, not fitting in the current mold, but looking at it outside of the scope of where you are today and how you can get to that next level, and how you can get your students prepared. I wanna start out with a success story. When I was leaving the office this morning, uh, one of my uh, people that worked for me said, did you know that Montgomery students and a group of other students, about 15 students across the state, took the assessment at the Skills USA competition last week, passed the assessment through your fire science program, they can leave Montgomery Public School in four weeks be a paid firefighter. In four weeks through your fire science program. That is what success is. In four weeks be a paid firefighter. I mean, and that's just one success story. We could go on and on and on talking about success stories, but that one was just handed to me as I walked out the door. So kudos to you as a board superintendent, DeBrell, for the work that you're doing to ensure that these students have the same opportunity for success that any other student in the state has. And so going forward uh, with that, what I did was went out with DeBrell, as superintendent mentioned, we walked through every program that you have in the system. Uh, every uh, secondary program. We walked through some middle school programs, but every secondary program we walked through, we looked at everything from facilities to outcomes, uh, program outcomes. How many students are certifying in your program? Uh, how active are you in student organizations like Schools USA, FBLA? What are you doing in that arena? Uh, we looked at uh, money, cost investment. What are we investing in these programs? And just a lot of different factors to kind of come up with um, a list of recommendations also met with industry people and not only in this area this is the map that you have in your folder your uh, workforce region we have all of the data that you have looked at in region seven uh, and if not we can provide that for you but 
the needs in your region. Uh, you can see each area we have worked with superintendents over the last two years to help give them information that can inform decisions rather than just let's see a teacher retires, let's replace that same area. Maybe we need to go a different path. Just because you have a business program doesn't mean if that teacher retires you need to go back with another business program. There may be a need to shift based on automotive industry and the other industries that we're all very aware of that are in your area. So we really took a hard look at that to, to kind of come up with our, our framework. Partnership with industry is key. Um, your industry and your community, uh, they are sitting primed and ready to support, ready to help. Uh, verbal commitments from those industry partners that have talked about, we will put equipment in these programs. We will put possibly even teachers in these programs. We have a school system this year that's kicking off an initiative where a company is going to send an employee for 30 days and another company is going to send a, uh, an employee in for 30 days and we're going to provide a facilitator. You want to talk about staying current. There's no better way to stay current with industry trends and standards than to have industry send a teacher in, um, a guest lecture, let me rephrase that, a guest lecture in to the classroom and then go back to work and then in 90, 120 days come back in or a different person coming in from industry, you're getting a direct relationship established, a pipeline for those potential employees, the company already knows the, the student, the student understands the company, a direct hire in many, in many, many cases. So those are the, the level of partnership that your industries, and I know many of you are already aware of this, but just to help validate that, uh, in my conversations with the industry in this area, they're not only ready to partner with Montgomery Public Schools, but with many school systems within Region 7. They're partnering with, expanding programs. We're adding in excess of 75 career tech programs across the state next year as a result of the 21st century workforce body. So this is very contagious, and our capital city has got to lead in, in work such as that. I want my piece of the pie. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> 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 yes, we do. Yeah. And that's good. That, that's, what, that's what your role is, and I can appreciate that. Uh, providing students with the opportunity to train that ends in high-paying careers. This article, I wanted to say amen and pass the place. Um, that is from a perspective outside of our state. You can see that Alabama has embraced this, financially embraced this. The, the, the workforce bond, the dual enrollment bond, the workforce council, all of these pieces that are helping to inform our work and help lead our decision making, all of those things are primed and ready. Having our students so that they not just leave with a high school diploma, but that part of the accountability system that you, your school system is measured by an industry credential has the same level of importance as a 36 on the ACT had in college readiness. This state has never measured success around career, college and career. We've measured success around a test, a single indicator. Today, your success is measured by an industry credential, an ACT score, at equal level of significance. That's a whole new opportunity for school systems and for students. So it's really a huge, huge opportunity there when it comes to accountability. Credentials are laid out not by educators. Credentials are determined by industry. We have a list for every program, and those, uh, an example would be CPR. That is a great certification to have. That does not have the same level of significance as a 36 on the ACT, or a 32 on the ACT, or a 28 on the ACT. But a CNA certification, that you have to have your CPR to get to CNA, but your kids can leave your school system, which they do, with a CNA certification that requires a CPR. And if they have that, then they give your system equal level of accountability as a kid with a 32 on the ACT. In many cases, the 32 on the ACT student may be that CNA. So I'm not, I'm not sitting at the different standards. That kid that scores a 32, they may be your certified CNA student. Certified nursing assistants, I'm sorry. And we have, health science we have about 20 students participating in that now. How many? About 20. Okay. And uh, Root Tech is about to come on board with the CNA also. They should. Yeah. Yeah. They should. Yeah. Jeff Davis is doing okay. it now. Okay. And I uh, okay. got an email from uh, Diane Young, and they're about to participate in also. That's just one example of me. And I want to talk about some of your current existing programs and kind of mention a few things that I saw just as a walkthrough uh, in the field. 
Yes. Yeah, you use another acronym there also, CPR. Yes. What was that? See, I started, that's for you like your, um, these these acronyms and you know I need to know exactly what it is. That's why I ask questions for two lines. Ms. Porterfield? Yes, ma'am. Ms. Allen can tell you oh. exactly what CPR is. Oh, I just said cardiopulmonary resuscitation. Well, I didn't think, no, you know, I, I, well, my, my, my wife is certified as CPR, oh. but I didn't think and know that we were looking at this in terms of, it could have been something else, sure. you know, in terms of the technical area, right. so I'm trying to figure out right. what this uh, particular C, I mean, acronym represented. Absolutely. So my and wife is certified to, CPR. Right, and I wanted to use that example because we still recognize the importance of a credential, but in Alabama we have to find the career readiness indicators for part of the accountability in our labor for No Child Left Behind. So that's kind of a stackable example, and there's many others. OSHA for uh, safety is a great one to have, but it does not get you to the level of accountability. You have to have OSHA safety certification in order to get to some of the others, but it does not have the same level of significance as the passing score on the 18 exam. So we have two different levels that we're supporting. Not only are those CRIs important, but we fund those. That's from the state sends money to the local school system to fund those CRIs, okay? So in the past where your zip code may have defined what opportunities you have, that no longer exists. It is equal opportunity for every student at the state's, our tax dollars expense, to certify those students to an industry standard. Okay? Major, major move in the, in the right direction. Um, <clears throat> joint partnerships to make your initiatives come a reality through whether that's AIDT, uh, whether that is the Department of Post-Secondary Education, whether that is local uh, government funding, all of these partners are ready to sit down, formalize a written agreement on providing financial support to make this a reality for, for, for your students of this, of this school system. Uh, the partnership between dual enrollment that you mentioned. Our students in Alabama now have greater access to higher education than ever before. Um, the governor had $5 million in his budget that was approved. That's in addition to the 10 million that industry can put up to match that's in the bill. So there's a possibility to have in excess of $15 million that's open not to specific students, but to all students that meet the minimum requirements to get into those dual enrollment college programs. Major, major game changer uh, for us all. Um, I wanna talk a moment about uh, students could graduate. We have students in this state that graduate with their two year degree the week before they graduate with their high school diploma. Think of, think of that as a, as a model for the students of the school system. Wow. That needs to be occurring in Montgomery Public School. <coughs> There's no reason it's not occurring. So we need to set up an opportunity for that to occur and we can. Um, another thing is academic integration. Um, in your current um, MTech facility, you have a comprehensive school. You, that keeps a lot of students. I played ball, my kids play ball in school. That's very important to them. The young man here in the paper. The ball is very important. If you don't offer the full scope of the band, the athletic programs, all of the other things, it's a deterrent to students coming from all of your school systems into a career tech opportunity. We have 52 standalone career tech centers that students are bused to, that students drive to across the state of Alabama. These students graduate from their home school, they play ball and are in the band at their home school, they're a part of, they're a graduate of their home school, okay? So it's no longer you either do this or you do that. You can do it all. You know, that, that makes me feel so good <laughs> that um, we can provide those opportunities for our children. And, and similarly to what we saw in Tuscaloosa, where they bust them in and the core courses are taken at their home school and their technical courses are taken at the technical center. And that opens up a whole, um, I, I mean, a large number of 
individuals would, that certainly would not participate now, the, 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 the wellness of opportunities open up for them, and certainly it will cause that program to grow. Absolutely. The other piece of that is, you know, we want our students to be active in the band. We want them to be in choir. We want them to be part of an athletic team. That's part of the essential skills that our industry continues to tell us we're missing the benchmark. How to work as a team. How to get to work on time. How to do all of the things that you learn and the things that I just mentioned. Those are the areas that can enhance those essential soft skills rather than us trying to teach it in an indirect or in a classroom implement that across the board so that students are getting that they don't even realize Absolutely. they're getting that turn your center into what some of our centers across the state are doing now into a simulated company instead of having a student handbook you need an employee name kids clock in they clock out we're emulating the world of work so that it's a smooth transition and students are ready to leave work leave school and go to work without having to understand what is an employee name uh, we're setting our centers up at, with, a, with a company like a, um, what am I talking about, like a um, um, organizational structure. You have the teacher is the CEO. Under that teacher is a, a shop foreman or a lab foreman, a safety foreman. So that again, they understand what an organizational structure even means. That you, you don't normally leave high school and, and become the CEO. There's a process to get you there. So really helping those students to see that. You know, we don't do anything right now in education for a student to really understand that. And so we're changing those things. And what you're doing or hopefully embarking on here is an opportunity for your students to have the same access to these possibilities that other students in our state are having today. Um, also, I wanted to um, make mention here before I go over this, uh, this sheet. These uh, programs that we're going to talk about, the academies that you currently have, I was in um, Jeff Davis, I think, and there was an industry advisory committee going on where your industry people were sitting around the table with your administrator, with your central office people, and they were talking about the strengths and weaknesses of your academy. What is working, what is not working. It's not a group of educators sitting at a table. It is where they are represented to mainly listen and respond to what they're telling us, but we're not there telling them what we're gonna do. We're there gathering input from them so that they can inform our decisions. That is what it's all about. That is what will get you the industry support that will allow you to do things that we never thought we could do because of financial burden and other things. If our industry is behind us and supporting this effort, the sky is the absolute limit to what, what the possibilities in your school system will be. So I just wanted to, to make mention of another best practice. Um, if you'll pull this sheet here out, I want to uh, kind of start through it. It is the kind of the recommended uh, matrix here. Remember what I said about busing or students driving. We have students that leave their home school, and I call a home school the one that they enroll in, the one they'll graduate from, okay? Mm -hmm. They leave from that school and they get in their car because that's what they want to do. They don't want to load up on the bus, and they have the, the mechanism to do that. Either their parents can afford it, they have gas put in their car, whatever that may be. That's how they get there, and that's okay. We don't need to say you either get on the bus or you don't go. Again, we limit opportunity and possibility. Why put parameters around something just because we can control it? Okay, let that happen. Let that, we're okay with that. Um, if Carver, and Carver does, currently have the Advanced Manufacturing Academy and Culinary Academy, why can students from Jeff Davis not go and take part in that? Why well, move a culinary program, this multi-million dollar program, into a new center just because it's at a center? Let students commute to there. Let the state help you facilitate transportation costs to get your students from Jeff Davis, Lanier, Lee, Park Crossing. Let them help you fund. It won't be funded totally, but help you offset the cost of getting students to Carver for those, those academies. Okay, so you see those mechatronics is um, the third one there. You see an asterisk there. We, you all have a program there that's a simulation of a me mechatronics, but we got to enhance that. The other two are fully functional. There's some needs for some additional space at the Advanced uh, Manufacturing Academy capacity to handle students from Jeff Davis Lanier because when you start opening the opportunity, your enrollment is obviously going to grow in those programs. So there's some capacity issues there that would have to be addressed, but nothing that is a showstopper, okay? You already have a strong foundation started. All we've got to do is expand that. 
your culinary program is as good as I've seen in the state. Okay, your culinary facility equipment. Yes. Okay. No, I don't want to send you on a, on a, I don't want to send you on a, okay. the, the amount of credentialing coming out of the program is not acceptable. The CTSO participation is not acceptable. Okay, so there's room for improvement, but there's a mechanism in place and accountability that can force that to occur. So we, and we're in the process of working through that. Um, that culinary program can, can disguise the limit. The hospitality and tourism part, the, all of the components that are set up there for a state and national model you have in place, okay? Um, the well, yes. manufacturing. Mm -hmm. Is that still, because that's a violation of the OSHA standard, that um, program being on the second floor in that building? It, it's now downstairs in a separate building out okay. to the side. Okay. And that building, okay. you know, we've, we've got some equipment okay. issues there and some space issues. Yeah. There's no classroom and we've got yeah. students housed in the uh, shop area to have the, the classroom and there's some need there and we'll get into that as we work through this but there's some options there your mechatronics um, Ms. Ross it's on the second floor currently that is on the second floor yeah. that's the program you're well, the advanced manufacturing is a standalone building it by is. itself yes. and the thing about that still too we can uh, whatever numbers uh, that can it can serve we can still offer those vacancies to students that are in other schools absolutely until we get to the point of being able to expand that program with respect to the size absolutely yeah. your industry that's a, one of your major focus uh programs for your local industry here and they will help you expand that program yeah. because they have such a need for the outcome of that program which is an industry certified student in particular areas so you got great potential there at Carver with those with those three academies. Absolutely. At Jeff Davis, your Health Science Academy, wow. Um, it's doing great work. There's great uh, enrollment. The enthusiastic teacher that I saw. I mean, just lots of things going with CNA certifications and a lot of opportunity there. You have a Health Science Academy. Health Science, we have probably expanded 20 to 25 health science programs across the state in the last two years because there's such a high demand. Um, you, we all know what the wage capabilities is there. And you know, health science is much broader than nursing. Yes. We think of health science, we think of nursing. <coughs> much, I mean, look, look in the hospital. Uh, really, nurses are some of the, the fewer in number when you really look across the spectrum of radiology and extra, all yes. of the things that are available. Yes. Um, your teaching academy at Jeff Davis is a, another great venue for students. And again, the Carver students could go to the Health Science Academy at Jeff Davis or possibly at the other facility that I'm going to mention in a moment. But still, allowing that flexibility for students to come and go and to meet the needs of your local school system. That is critical that we that we lead with a good understanding of that. Your teaching academy leads to an opportunity for teacher potential students that want to pursue education. We don't want teachers to go through college, get a degree, and come back and realize this is not for me. One, it's a disservice to your yeah. student. A program like this, it's uh, taught correctly, and opportunities are given to your students. It can be the screener, screening agent to help students define this is I'm passionate about this for the right reason. So that's what potential you have there with the teaching academy. Lanier, you have a business and finance academy there, and that uh, academy is, is functioning and, and working through, and we're working through some, um, I hate to call them quality issues, but some things that can help us to enhance the quality of that academy. Your Law and Public Safety Academy currently resides at Lanier, and that is a, my recommendation to that is going to be to put that program in the new location that I'm going to recommend to you because, um, and I have to go ahead and put this on the table, the MTech uh, program there that currently exists. If that uh, project, if you proceed with that and it goes to the old mall location, the fire department and the police department is housed in that same location. There's no reason for us to build a fire station, to build a fire station. There's a reason for us to partner with the city and use those facilities to grow and expand that program. Only makes sense. Possibility for many, many things to occur there between the school system and the city to offset the cost of that. Really great opportunity there. Lee, your IT academy, uh, really great academy to some number issues. 
Um, when I walked in, the class didn't have the numbers it needed in it. And I think when you recruit and you do the things that Jabrell, and I commend Jabrell for her work around that recruiting effort. The things that you just had at the mall to educate the parents and the stakeholders, phenomenal opportunity, as good as I've seen in the state. Your information booklets about opportunities, as good as I've seen in the state. So that piece of the puzzle, as we flesh that out and do more to educate our parents, to make them aware that, you know, it's really okay to be a welder because that welder is going to make $80,000 with no student of home debt. That's okay to do that. But until we as parents, are okay with talking about that at the yeah, 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 we, but until, until we as parents are okay talking about that and, and saying that at the social gathering. Is it easier to social gather to say my son is enrolling at the university or my son is going to become a welder? Which one it sounds better in the eyes of people, in the ears of people? It's that I'm going to the university. We leave off the fact that they're going to return with $100,000 of debt, and they might get a job and they might not. Um, so well, and I'm not downplaying the college good point. Yeah. I'd like to come back later and sure. talk about PR and talk about that. So I'm glad you made that point, because it's very mm -hmm. critical that we start thinking about that as well. Absolutely. But the thing is, if we are uh, providing those programs and the children find an interest in that, and we are tapping into their talents, then certainly, um, you know, parents should listen to the ideas of their children in terms of what their desires are. Sometimes parents have desires for a child that the child is not even interested in. So we've got to allow some leeway for children uh, in terms of those things that they're interested in and allow them to just go and pursue those things if, and, and forget about whether or not your child is attending this university, that university, what we're doing prepare children for life and making sure that they can be self or independent individuals Absolutely. once they leave. Yes. Yes. This Absolutely. Your new course called Career Preparedness that every student in the state of Alabama is now required to take before they graduate. It's a course that most systems are doing this in the ninth grade. Some do it in the eighth and it's a different, but that course requires that a student take a career interest inventory, looks at their interests, their aptitude, and their work values, and it helps to form a plan going forward. What courses do I need to take in the ninth grade, 10th grade, 11th grade, 12th grade, and beyond? What are my career goals and what coursework do I need to take in order to get there? That's an area that's got to be enhanced for your counseling and your career preparedness. That accountability piece there has got to be really revved up and, and a lot more emphasis put on that to make sure the right student is in the right, right place. Absolutely. So I've told our teachers across the state, next year when the student walks in your door, if you do not see that that student has a genuine interest, look at that four-year plan and send that student back to the counselor and say, this student doesn't need to be in my machine program. Their interest is in health science and you need to get them there. And that's critical. It is it's critical. critical. That uh, the counseling piece is critical, yeah. such that they can uh, help those children and give some direction in terms of which way that you go. Absolutely. Dr. Cleveland, what about what the counseling is to, for example, I have an eighth grader and she came home last week and handed me the screen sheet of paper. She had done some assessment and she said, I think I should be a teacher. That's what, you know. I just feel like as a parent that maybe we need to help the parents understand what our jobs are when we get those papers home and say, okay, great, now I know what your skills look like when you be encouraging you as a parent, but I just felt like I was just given a sheet of paper and, yeah. that, know, and a, I'm not your regular parent. Right, you know? that's a breakdown in, in communication between the school and, and the parent. That's an area we need to focus on yeah. and, and, uh, and do more with because my son brought home uh, a document that gave me all of his courses and gave me another sheet that helped inform my decision making. I have a ninth grader as well. So that is just a breakdown in communication and that's something that we can definitely um, do something about. I think yes, we need to educate mm -hmm. parents too because a lot of our parents don't have the background yeah. that I do yeah. and you know, have the right questions. Right, absolutely, that's a great question. One of the things that I think is also critical to that is the parents have a plan, some of them, that is different from the one that the child is interested in, which is what Mr. Porterfield is saying. And consequently, when that piece of paper comes home and it isn't what you parent want, 
right. you have a tendency to discourage mm -hmm. yes. and push mm -hmm. in the direction that you, you want, want to go which down. then is not serving your child, but Absolutely. is serving your dream. Absolutely. Now, exactly. educating the parents is an excellent idea, but you also need to let them know that my child might want to be a welder as opposed to being a doctor. But I decided you're going to be a doctor come hell or high water. Yeah, it probably won't happen. Right. Right. It yeah. probably won't, but that's where the, the push is going to be. Right. So we need to... Uh, well, and your, your career coaches, your parent liaisons, whatever part of this you have in, in your uh, system, those people, that needs to be a key focus of their work, is to educate those parents. Send those people into the cafeterias of your industry where your people work. See, your parents are not coming to school, but parents that come to school are the ones that really don't need to be there. <laughs> you got to go to that room. I know, I've tried well, to help parents. Like, yeah, yeah. no, no. See, it, it becomes as simple as this. Um, all of us here, when you were 15, 16, 17, even 18 years of age, how many of you could see the future and see that you're in the places that you're in today? You know. <laughs> How, how could you have seen the future and see the future in the place that you're in the day? Uh, the thing is about this, what we do understand though, for you to be where you are and all of us to be here, you have a foundation. Your educational foundation calls you to take whatever path that you find yourself in now. So certainly when we provide these resources for our children, we don't know uh, 10, 15 years from now, but one thing we do know, we can give them that foundation. Absolutely. And that middle school grade where you drop out, not just this mm -hmm. system, but across the state, career preparedness course and career tech education, that's the only way you're going to retain them in school. You're not going to retain them in school through traditional education. It's not Absolutely. Absolutely. So it's CBS at will. Um, the one that's listed here is MTech under the school. The first five programs are the current programs that exist at the, at the center, at the MTech school. The building science and construction, electrical, heating and air, welding, and advertising design. Another thing I want to make reference to that you may not be aware of, in many of our centers across the state, a student may earn a math credit while they're at the center. So when they're in, in their building construction program, what better way to learn geometry than doing the slope of a roof? The measure of theory. All of these concepts that can be integrated. And then that transportation block of time that you're losing, they can still be in the choir when they get back to their school because they've accomplished one of their academic credits. Mama. They only have three to take back at that home school. So it's integrated. I can guarantee you data will tell you that that student will retain the math they've been taught. Mm -hmm. Where a student that takes the math in traditional classroom lecture, they're memorizing for the test on Friday. Mm -hmm. But that's again, you, you, you got to remember, uh, those who are working out there, that becomes a part of the application. Yes, sir. You that's know, right. you're actually applying that which you've learned in a real life-like situation. So they'll get that benefit Absolutely. in terms of seeing just as what we're, we're trying to get them to understand in terms of, of what we look at, the conceptual approach we run something. They might actually stay in school. Absolutely. Because that math piece is a lot of times what causes that student to decide school's not for me. And then it's in not some, a reflection of the math teachers. Right. Not throwing stones. I'm just saying in reality, right. that math is what many times sends a student. Absolutely. I have a question on, uh, I know certification of instructors has been an issue because you want them to have a teaching certificate. But are y'all being the state working to work around it? You get somebody who's been a career electrician, but he or she is not a certified teacher, right. teacher electrician. So. Yeah. What we're doing, yes, what we're doing with that is currently we've revamped our certification program in the past and we would hire an electrician, tell that electrician, we're going to hire you, but you have to go back and take five college classes. And by the way, pay your own tuition. And by the way, do that. Take, take your $60,000 pay cut to come to work for us. And then go, so now the electrician that comes in, we put them through a 196-hour training program, stay developed, free. The teacher is assigned a mentor that's been teaching for X number of years. That mentor comes into that new teacher's classroom on four occasions. The new teacher goes to the mentor's classroom on four occasions, not within your system, somewhere outside your system. So they have a mentor-mentee relationship. The retention rate, this is our first year to do this, unbelievable, the retention rate. 
Last year we would lose teachers left and right. Yeah. And we couldn't keep them because they become discouraged. They couldn't understand how to apply. So that's our new certification model. Now, they have to team teach currently with a math teacher in order to meet the highly qualified definition. So that's why I would recommend that there be a minimum of two math teachers at your intake center so that they could team teach with construction teacher, electrical teacher, heating and air, welding, so on and so forth, so that those students can earn a math credit at the same time they're getting their skill. Okay, that's why it's important that those at least two uh, math teachers, and I think two could do that. They don't have to be there every every time something is taught in each program. They can team teach and meet that requirement so that, that you're staying compliant. So those students would still be held to the same standard. So mm -hmm. any end of course assessment, they would still have to take the same end of course assessment that your students that were getting the traditional math. So it's not about lowering the standard. Mm -hmm. It's not about watering down what you're being taught. It's about learning it in a different in a different yeah, method. Mm -hmm. Right. But the thing is that would be then a part of the core curriculum if you are saying the math is there in the career center. So that means then that they will receive credit for the core class as well as the technical class on the same site. Yeah. Now would that have any impact in terms of how many more teachers we would have to place in the uh, facility itself the as a let's say uh, one of those four courses right. right since it's supposed to be a technical center how right. many of these would we actually need to have that would be a part of the technical center right there would be two math teachers just math just math only we wouldn't have english as science history just, okay. just, okay. just math. the math that's okay. right and those two math teachers don't need to be math teachers that are not working out they need to be math teachers that get it Oh, connect the dots. Oh, so we don't need to look at somebody that's not successful over here. Let's put them over here in this school. No, because you're setting that school up for failure. Absolutely. So that's a critical ingredient to the success of, of this as well. Will they be funded space? They would. You would be t earn units. Our They would be our units. Uh -huh. what, what happens at a center? Let me explain this to you. What happens at a center? Because you're not earning units at a center. You earn a director's salary and a counselor's salary. But at a center, a portion of JD's units, because JD's sending 75 kids to this center. So an allocation of JD's teacher unit would go to the center. An allocation of Lanier's, because, and that helps in, incentivize the school to say, if I'm going to be sending two of my units over here, then I need to make sure I send 90 kids students over here so it's incentive to help them make that transition and your principals are going to embrace this because now that center can help them get to accountability before they never had a reason to embrace career tech it was that other education now it can help them get to accountability so they have a reason to embrace this okay total shift in, in thinking uh, across the board number six uh, there says IT networking the law and public safety would not be a new hire because you would be moving at, at this is my recommendation to, to conversation from Lanier to the, the new facility which remind yourself that Lanier kids would still have access to the law and public safety you're not changing anything for Lanier's kids or you're all actually opening it up for Carver Jeff Davis Lanier Lee all students would have access at that center and you can't get better training ground than in a fire station an active live fire station and a police i mean that you can't do that here's one question um, now we you, you've indicated here to me but this just get correct me if i'm wrong that at jeff davis the health science academy is working well but then when we say added programs you want to add that to mtech you definitely need because of the amount of students See, your health, number science, of yes, your health okay. science academy at Jeff Davis is to at capacity. Is that capacity? Yes, sir. Okay. So you, you leave that there because you already, if you've got an opportunity to not bus or not transport and it's a quality academy, you don't want to upset uh, quality. Right. Let's continue that on just like you've got quality going at Brew Tech in healthcare. Would we consider that then being dual? programs within the system because you have it at one and you offer the same yeah. program at another. That's right. And but so you're, you have dual programs uh, running at... Uh, right, and you have that going on now. You have it at Brutech and you have it at uh, Jeff Davis. You have healthcare. And they're both programs at Brutech and Jeff Davis. 
year by month. And so what's happening there, we're turning students away in your system that have interest in health science. We're saying, sorry, we can't take this. Oh, right. And that's unfortunate. We'll leave the Oxford Academy at Lee as well. So I'll, you're saying everything on here, on the first, well, really the second column, mm -hmm. underneath your traditional schools, you're not going to move them. You're just going to expand them. Right. Leave those intact. The only ones that I'm recommending based on my review are the law and public safety. You're going to move that, or my recommendation is to move that, not close it, but move it. Right. And then there's a couple other, uh, like you've got two um, family consumer science teachers at, um, help, at no, the two, you got two, you got two, um, two teachers facts teachers at some school. One is a shelf and one's a more traditional facts teacher. Oh, Lee. 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 At Lee, you might take that one where you can gain a teacher unit to add one of these programs. You've got one, you can continue with one, but why are we doing two family consumer science teachers at that school? Take that unit so that you're not adding costs and that's where you can pick up and add one of these new programs at the MTEC. Then you're not, you're not adding costs to your system. And then you're opening it up to all students, not just the And you've got quality facilities to train them. Okay. That's the other piece to this. As we build, look through this, the MTEC, as I'm referring to, you've got to have an environment that is industry, industrial, conducive. You cannot take a building like this and create a welding lab. Yeah, you could. But if you're going to invest a substantial amount of money, and then as you grow and need to expand, because I I'll go on record telling you, you're going to build this today, and in five years, you're going to be expanding because the workforce is not going to change. The automotive industry is here to stay. They're not going to pick that up and move it somewhere. So if you're going to be expanding and growing this, a place like the mall has that capacity and ability. A place like your current facility, quite frankly, in my opinion, I don't see that being an option. With the expansion, the industrial look, you can't treat a career tech center environment like you do a traditional school. It has to have the look, the feel, if you want the, the industry to respect you and to invest in you. You have got to create an environment that they are proud of and that they recognize as an industry environment. That is key if you want their financial backing and support in this work. You see also pre-engineering and drafting mm -hmm. uh, is number eight and then health science. These programs here, again, these nine programs were derived from your industry workforce data, not programs that I like. Not so programs that you're yeah. said, yes. From your workforce data and what your industry people have said to me, we need students that have credentials in these program areas. That's how this was, was derived. Okay. The, pro the okay. programs you have, the five, are, are directly aligned. What you are doing out there now are directly aligned with what you need. We just need to offer more credentials. The facility has got to meet a standard. I mean, we can't teach welding in a class. And y'all know that. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not throwing stones. I'm just saying it can't occur because the students can't be credentialed. They can't get time under the hood. You can't learn to be a welder looking at the book. you got to be under the hood, and you've got to be with, a, with a, an electro on your hand. Right, right. Um, here, uh, under the proposed programs for MTAC, we already had the pre-engineering drafting. What, what are you doing over here? You say it's added. It's not already there? No, the intake under the six, seven, eight, and nine. Six, seven, eight, and nine, they are just shifted over to the new programs in the column of two. You shifted those over. That's right. Just okay. moving. Those are new programs that you don't currently offer. Oh, that's right. Those would be the new They're just shift over. In other words, we're starting with six to nine, we just shift that to add pro. That's right. Okay. That's it. And there's a way here based on your current employees in the career tech world out in your school system that you're only going to be investing two additional teacher units to make this happen. Because you can take current teachers that may be retiring or teachers that the superintendent and you have not chosen to bring back. You can take those teachers, move them into this so that your system is not having to pick up the charge or locally fund uh, teacher units to make this happen. 
okay? So it's really a, a good way to align your resources with your industry needs rather than what we've always done, okay? That's just a different way to think about it. Park crossing, your ag and your uh, business marketing programs, when I met with that principal and uh, Jabril and I had a good conversation about this can't be traditional shop. We can't have, let's have a business program and let's play on the computer. You're gonna end up with a Microsoft certification and you're gonna end up with your NCCER certification in your ag program. You're gonna end up with industry credentials. You're not gonna just teach the traditional way that we've always taught some of our career tech programs. So really enhancing the expectation of your teachers have to rise. If your teachers are not interested in it, then maybe they don't need to be in the classroom. Maybe we don't need that program. That sounds harsh, no, but at no, the end of the day, no, yeah, no, it's it's it, yeah, it's about the student. And so uh, that expectation can be set out by the board. If the teachers don't certify themselves to their program, then you don't need them because they're doing your students a disservice. Mm -hmm. So well, that should be in every area. Amen. At, at yeah. Park Rock, we need to crank it up and on. Yeah, to get those so that their feeders, see at Park Crossing, these programs are many times feeder programs into the, an MTech program. In other words, an agri-science program could give you the core curriculum, then you can transfer into your building science, your electrical, your heating and air, your welding, any of those programs you can directly feed out of a, an ag program. Okay, and that, at that middle school grade level, we're really working with our agri-science teachers to teach the core Make sure we get those middle school students so that they're engaged, a reason to stay in school, that same concept that we talked about. Brew Tech, your program's there. Um, wow, I mean, I, I'm just, I continue to be so impressed. I've carried some people out, I'm gonna continue to carry people out. From a facility standpoint, you walk in the door and it's industrial. The, the walls reflect what you need and what you see at, at uh, Hyundai or Mercedes or your tier suppliers. One, go look at it and see how good, what good shape it's still in. It's easy to maintain. It's inexpensive to maintain. You put sheetrock on the wall, and I'm talking your language now, but you, you know, that facility is a, an easy way to maintain a facility in, in public schools. So I, I can't say enough about the facility, but also the quality that's going on. The pre-engineering, not pre-engineering, drafting and design, I would give anything for my kids to be in that program. Okay, I would, I would put my kid in that program if I lived in this school system. Okay? Well, if he had an interest in Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and you're going back to the same thing that I trying to get around. Good. But I want to talk about quality. I yeah. recognize yeah. that. No. Okay. I can tell I got a You got one of the ones that's out there driving. You want to hear if I say something. Yeah, yeah. 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 get away from that. I like that. All right. Yeah. That's a good one. All right. <laughs> Uh, and I, I could talk more, and I hate that I'm pointing out certain programs and not talking about others. You've got some good things going on, so I don't want to lose sight of that. Uh, what I would recommend is that you take these programs that are here based on industry data, and you go out there and create a model that industry can help you fund and will help you fund. The government here in this town will help you fund I've got verbal commitments. I don't have it in writing for you, but I have verbal commitments. They are poised and ready for superintendent to make a recommendation, the board approves, and they're ready to sit down and talk about how much money. Good. They're, they're poised and ready to partner with you. Okay, well, they, they make sure they show us the money now because uh, we can't move without the funding to do these things that we see as our, a part of our wish list. Now. Right. We don't want to get out there and say, well, the board accepts doing this, but then find ourselves without the money to make this thing happen. Right, right. And, and we don't just want the verbal commitment. We need something in writing so that we'll know that we're moving in the right direction. Not only that, we'll know that the funding is there. Right. I might say this, and I'm stepping over my bounds, and then they're probably just telling me to hush you down. But <laughs> if the board makes a decision to go forward, then the expectation to fund that, there's a board that's supporting it. Then they have that to say, I'm willing, we're willing to put in 10 million. We're willing to put in 5 million. 
we're willing. So the board has to act. So in other words, we need to say yes. yes. What we would mm -hmm. like to move forward, and then they'll come back. And Right. And if they don't, you don't have to you don't have to build anything or go forward. Well, you can approve it as a board and then put it on the table and not. And approving it does not put us financially That's in right. a bad situation. Approving it says we are wanting to do this. We need our partners. So now, once we give that signal that the yes. green lights there. However, we can't move forward without funding. They can do it. I think right. that's what Mr. Ford. Okay. And let me say this too. Let, let me just say this. You will notice that I didn't begin this work session. We're talking about um, us needing money. Right. We began this work session talking about what's going to be best for our children. Okay. That's going to have to be paramount in your in our thinking, lest we move ourselves back to a place of where we're stuck on on the money piece again. Um, if we cannot. We know that this is going to be best for our children, right? right? Yes. So when, if we were to vote on anything, we're voting on what's best for our children. We realize at the same time that without funding, we're not going to be able to do it. But we have to take some steps forward in order to be able to at least put ourselves out there to say, come help us okay. if you're serious. That's you know? point, point well taken. But the fact of the matter is, we had already initially stated that that was the whole purpose of getting the model, and that was to move MTEC back. But we were at a standstill because then the funding was not there to move forward with the program. So we've already, this is more that the, the well, no, no, yeah. fund was, was not there. there. If the fund was there, then we would not have been able okay. subjected let's, to the fact of losing the board. Yeah. Right. Because I'm not trying to go back. No. I'm, I'm yeah. really not. This yeah. I'm trying to get our thinking in a different mm -hmm. place. Right. Yes. If we can get our thinking in a different place, just think of programs for children that will help them to be better. Um, citizens and be better people, citizens. Believe and then let's just say the vote that you make will not necessarily be toward the funding yet mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. vote you make will be toward yes right. this is the program we yeah. want yeah. and this is where we want the program to take place and all of that because when i make i want and i want the conversation that you're having um to be right here in this place because when it comes down to us making a vote or getting a vote, I don't want to go back through all of this again. Right, right. I want us to be right here now. Anything that we need to talk about, let's talk about it right now. Let's hash it out. Because when it comes down to me saying, y'all, this is the career and technical education piece that I want you to vote for, um, then you know, I, want, I want you to have clarity. Yeah, oh, and, and this is this, this is where I am. In other words, uh, um, when we purchased that piece at the mall, then initially that was the purpose for the MTEC there. We were all on board with that. Okay, after it had been on board, now it's my understanding because monies were never brought here to the board and said, said that we have X number of dollars to make this thing happen. And that's why that piece was taken off at that point in time in terms of moving forward. So uh, here we are looking again and saying, well, this is the one that's going to be conducive for our programs here. But then again, hey, we, we've had that conversation. We are all in agreement of doing that which is in the best interest of children. The only thing that stopped us at that time is my understanding that the funding was, wasn't there. Now, there were some plans that were trying to be put in place to generate funds. But then on the backs of individuals in terms of the jobs that they were holding at that point in time, which was not going to be a piece that would substantiate what we needed because certainly the, 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 the work was still there, even if we didn't take the employees, you know. If we took what we still got that work back. So that was still a need for those individuals. Now, that's why we stopped. Now we can come back again and say, oh yes, that's what we want, that's our desire. And I think that's all of our desire. You know, I think we all would agree that that's the best place. But still, we're going to be faced with the same issue. Not quite. Not quite. 
because the another part of this that I mentioned before, remember I told you that I talked with post-secondary and um, they, they have an interest as well. So the possibility of them even supporting what we do here. But what I've learned since that time, Mr. Porterfield, is that we have to take a step. We gotta take a step. And then, if it's true what they are indicating, it will either show up or it won't. Well, let's move forward. Let's make it happen. Yeah, you know, you either get in there and put your money where your mouth is, or we are. That's what I'm talking about. I think we're good. So, kind of forward. I think we're good. This particular sheet, as I see it, is a more comprehensive plan and schematic for what we can accomplish. It's more involved, it's more specific, it's more generalized and specific to say, these are the things that we can do. In the areas where we've got capacity, we can make an adjustment by doing this. We can add others here. I think this is clear and concise, and if One more at clarity. our next. Is he a clarity? Okay. <coughs> If um, one of the important things is we have this presented to us, there is no doubt that we all can agree on this. No doubt. And, and let me say this, it scares me to death. <laughs> it really does, and I'm gonna tell you why. This is on paper. Mm -hmm. We have got to do a lot of work within our school system to make this what it needs to be. And the truth of the matter is, we gotta have some help. Yes. We've got to have help. And so, you know, I'm, I need every, just, just like your consulting has helped us to see ourselves, we're gonna need some continuation of that in order to be able to bring about the kind of quality that we're talking about. We are, we are at your beck and call, our capital city got to have this. Mm -hmm. Our industry and our capital city cannot go on without the support and the skills that you all can offer that you're not offering. Mm -hmm. We have got to partner with our industry and our city officials to make this happen. If we don't, mm -hmm. we're doing children of this community a disservice. Absolutely. Right. And we're doing the whole community a disservice. This is our middle class uh, that we're going to get back yes. that we have been living for the last 20 years. Yes. So I and that's what so this says, Melissa. Does it really that article I mean, says that this is making our community stronger. So I'm excited, and my request is let's put it on our let's get it on the agenda. Let's go. And I just want to say I'm excited that you're here. Excuse me. We heard you speak at one of the AASD conferences, and I'm just so glad. Like Eleanor said, we finally have this. This makes sense, mm -hmm. it matches up, it's not pie in the sky, and it's something that we can do to have our community. And we can make the first step that is necessary for right. the other pieces to step forward. Absolutely. We can make that first step. Well, we have to. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, we have to make it. Yeah, and it's not going to happen unless we do so. Yeah. And we so, have to make that first yes. step. I mean, that's just, yeah. because without it, Nothing else will happen. And something else that I like about this, I can see something for every child mm -hmm. yeah. from every school, you know, having an opportunity here. Um, so that, that's what's important to me, that the program be able to accommodate any student who has the desire to gain a knowledge, gain some knowledge and or skill in whatever. So, um, you know, this, this is a great um, opportunity. Um, oh, you can say as many as you'd like, but we have to close because we've got another part. Yeah. Well, um, like, there's a lot of cost savings when you're not doing a standalone school. You don't have to have a cafeteria. 
You don't have to have this. You don't have to have that. There's some things that you're going to save to help you invest in this center. So there's, know that. There's some things that the superintendent can, can show you on paper number-wise that's going to help you in your financial investment doing it in this fashion than, than you're currently investing in your current facility. Okay, I just wanted to make sure to throw that out there. And I also like it too that our students, I know my kids are so global as far as yes, social media, mm -hmm. and this is taking them out of their traditional school yeah. and it's really teaching them that industry standard of you are working with people from yeah. different places, and I think this is going to really be beautiful on so many levels. Good. Right. And so I'm willing to support your efforts anyway. Thank, thank, thank you. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Yeah. And it adds on to the development of work ethics, something that we've been missing. Uh, I, 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 I Thank, Thank you all. Thank you. Have a good weekend. Okay. Um, I'm going to have to go. Thank you. Thank you. Very good. Thank you. Very much. I am actually. Actually, I'm going to be very quick. If you, yes, if you will shift to this okay. manila package, folder binder. Well, my, my concern, if they, if, if they, if this is a new policy, man, 
and all of the laws and the policies that we have looked at, and certainly must have used this as some tool of God, and it's been changed, then why do we need to go back to that if this is the new? No, this, this manual has um, several policies that are very specific to Montgomery Public Schools, mm -hmm. to our district. So we can't just go and start with this new, we can't just scratch this and adopt this. Mm -hmm. We need to go through every single policy in this book to make sure it's covered in here. And if it's something specific to our district, that's not, because this is a generic book. Right. 20 school systems are using this sample manual right now. Mm -hmm. Fortunately, we're the 21st, so we're getting 20 versions of revisions, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. right? Um, but I've already found several things in here that are not in here. And I know y'all are gonna want them in here. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna talk, um, so we have to make sure everything that we have that's specific to the way we operate as a school system is gonna be covered in our new policy manual. Yeah. I'll give you an example. Hoover, Melissa gave me this example. Hoover has big zone issues about attendance and people trying to come in their school system and don't live there. They have a whole section in here in their manual that's different from this draft manual because that's an issue that's very specific to Hoover school system. But it's really not. We really well, need to look at what they're doing and well, th let me start with phase one then because I want to be clear that we're not creating new policies with this. This is, if we want to have a phase two where we look at some things that other systems are doing where we want to draft a policy for it, we can do that as well. But phase one is just really an update. Well, wouldn't it be feasible that we call a day of work session whereby we bring these manuals here and and all of us to take a look at yeah. I'm gonna, if you give me a second, I'm gonna go all the way through the process. What I'm doing right now is just explaining to you where we are. Ms. Porter? I'm what just, I'm just, I don't know why I'm here. I'm asking you questions. I'm hearing comments from everywhere else. I'm sorry. Yeah. What I'm doing right now is just explaining the basic before and after. I wanna tell you the difference between this book and I want you to understand what this is that we have right now. now what we're going to come up later is going to be a mixture of this one and this one. Yeah. That's okay. So we are doing that. Now let me walk through the process. We have so many major things, as you can see, happening in our district. This is with career tech and uh, curriculum. We have just as many things happening in HR, finance, operations. Every uh, section and department of our school system has major things going on right now. It's not really feasible for a project this big and this undertaking for me to send out sections to every mm -hmm. section mm -hmm. and have their group meet to go over it because I'm, I'm going to have to do every single page of it anyway because I have to make sure that the laws in your section are accurate. Mm -hmm. So if we review the laws as well, her policy, our policy, and the law over in that area, and we have notes. She and I are going to do that initial step report. Actually, she's going to do We did this one together because I needed to let her know the process we needed that would work for us. Um, we have this so outlined at this point going through that process. She's going to do this on her own for the next one. She's going to send me this. So what we've done together for our next section, she will send it to me. And then my proposal is to bring a committee together. We can do this two ways, and this is what I'm asking. We can have a work session with the whole board before we um, before I bring every se uh, section up. Or, and what I suggest, because mind you, it's going to be one section a month. I'm doing um, finance next. Um, so I guess that'll be what June. I'm going to try to have that. We'll try to do personnel by July. It'll be students start this. You, you see, we're doing every section. Instead of you having an extra work session every month, my proposal is is that once I get that draft from her and we do our initial revisions, that I pull together a committee with at least two board members on that committee. That committee will comprise of that department. So when I do finance, my committee will be Mr. Glover and, uh, and his supervisors or whoever else he wants there. I would like to have a couple of board members sitting on that committee, which is where we go through the page by page, line by line. Well, you'll have a copy of it, uh, those things right there. You'll have her version. I'll give you all the notes. I'll, I'll be able to walk you through step by step every section. I don't want to take up time in our board meetings to do that, and I don't want to have to call a work session right. um, every month. Right. 
But I also don't want to run the process out longer than it has to be because I we have a system now where we can probably have this done by Christmas with our sessions. But it's going to require you all, instead of me having, every person won't have to serve on every committee. Mm -hmm. That way you all don't have to come out every month for an additional work session. But if, and, and that meeting, committee meeting, is not going to be wrong. It's not going to be a four or five hour meeting because I would have already done the initial work. Mm -hmm. You're going to have my draft of our policy with my notes on it and I'm going to be able to walk you through page by page. And it's only going to be one section. How many sections total are there? Um, that you would like to so How would you do the committee? It will be, because some of these I'm doing together, like A, B, and C, those are together. Okay. Um, so there's going to be finance, um, personnel, let me see, one, two, three, four, five, Six, seven. It'll be seven. Okay. It'll be seven sections. These last ones, like a general public relations, organizational relations, I won't. As a matter of fact, I may try to go ahead and do those even with the other, um, yeah. one or the other. So, um, That's got my vote. We won't, I, I don't know we can't vote in here, but I just wanted yeah. to let you guys know where we were. Like I said, I've already gone through A, B, and C. I've given her my revisions. I told her what I want to do. My next step. Um, assuming you guys were okay with me doing it this way, is to um, give recommendations for two board members to sit on the next committee. I'll get with Renee. It'll be um, probably Superintendent Dr. Blair, Mr. Dotson, and probably Ms. Pitts, maybe Ms. Biggs, who, um, because these are district wide stuff at this point. It's not just department. Mm -hmm. I just want one or two board members to come sit on that committee. I'm gonna try to have it before the 13th board meeting. Because <laughs> we're, if she can get those revisions done soon, I'm ready. I'm waiting on her to hand me those revisions back. When she hands me the revisions, I can call that meeting together and we can start going through. And if we have any more changes, I can get them back to her and we can have a draft of that section ready to present at the board meeting. That's my goal. That's pushing it, but that is my goal. Because we've done we like it. goals. Right. Um, I'll also say, and you guys tell me how you want me to do it when I present it at the board meeting. My goal is not to sit and go page by page, like I'm doing in the committee meeting. But if you want me to do that, I will. I just want to get your own feedback. Well, if you're going to have two board members for each section, and there's seven sections, seven sections, that means we're going to have you involved in two. What am I? Exactly. Probably have to the yeah. um, wouldn't it be, I, I think, um, feasible that we look at those different sections and those who have desires to work on certain sections, work on those. Exactly. I just don't want to, I want to be able to, I want the work to have been so comprehensive that when we come in the committee of the whole meeting and we present it, I can just look at the Here's section eight, <laughs> section one point one because not going to be numbers anymore. Here's and mind you, everybody has the draft book, so I want you guys to read through this now. That's why I'm giving it to you at this point um, because there are really not a lot of corrections. If I look through my notes from section A, they're not. Yeah, cover, cover, delete, cover, delete, cover, restatement. We said it over. So they're not going to be a whole lot of changes. Um, well, I think from our involvement of the committee, we'll have a good overview. We have Mark make the recommendations. Well, okay. All right. So everybody's comfortable with me doing. You're going to put it up on the website, so absolutely so we can read it. Yeah. And what we'll, we'll do? Like what we're going to do simultaneously when we approve uh, a section? Because mind you, we're going to be we'll approve like section one. Or section, um, I think finance is three, fiscal okay. management in here. We will have both both sections up simultaneously on the website. So our website, when you go to finance, which I think is D, on our current manual, it'll say rescinded, mm -hmm. and then it'll say C such and such, and then we'll have we'll, we'll be we'll be kind of merging both of the books simultaneously on the website. Does that make sense? Yes. Would, would it be good to once the committees agree on what they want to do to, to email the changes to the other board Absolutely. members Absolutely. so we can do it in little pieces? That's exactly, that's exactly okay. what I meant. And that way we'll all... Everybody's going to have a current, when, when, with my changes, once I get those versions back from Melissa and I pull together this first committee, once we make whatever recommendations and I send them back to Melissa, 
you will have Melissa McKee, we, you will, I will resend that section back out to everybody so you can see what we've done to change. That's if right. we're ready to have it set, I'm putting it on the agenda for consider for approval. I'll talk just briefly, not in this level of detail, but I'm going to talk briefly to the public about what it is that we're doing, why we're doing it. I'm not going to say our book is jacked up. That's not their business. I'm going to, I'm going to say that we are moving forward with revisions and changes and uh, in every area of the system, including right. my area. Yes. And then that's and what we are. And we always seem to be absolutely. So, and mind you, a simultaneous project that's happening is also the Department of Manuals. Because right. everybody know I've been singing that little song. Uh -huh. um, so I can have started on that as well. Um, Ms. Pitts is working on our, our uh, employee handbook as we speak. We expect to have that presented um, sometime in May or June as well. Then she's immediately going to her personnel section in this book. Um, uh, Mr. Glover, I've already forwarded to he, him and uh, our payroll supervisor a sample finance departmental manual. So I pulled these resources together and I'm uh, disseminating them to different departments. So in addition to everything else that everybody has here during the day, this is kind of our side projects. So I'm excited about it. I'm excited <laughs> about laws that are accurate. So I hope you guys are as well. Um, I will have, how do you want to go about deciding who will be on what? Let's do it right now. Okay. Mm -hmm. No? I didn't say that. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't me. <laughs> Look, I think I, I understand. That's what I did. I didn't say no. Okay, we can do it. A, B, and C is school district organization, school board operation, and general school administration. Those are going to be the first, um, the first group that I've already completed. So we'll be trying to get that meeting together soon. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. You said A, B, and C. I mean, that's not what Carl wants to do. We got two point four. That's the old man, bro. She's she just told me. Oh, I think I saw I'm Beverly raise her hand. Okay, okay. okay. Ms. Rossi. Um, Mr. Mr. Porterfield, what I'm doing? Mm -hmm. I'm I'm really working from our sections and that we're adding to here. So we'll be referring to our book that we're really? changing and adding in. Okay, what A, B, and C covers in our book? A A is school district organization. Robert, if you just write A, B, and C, it'll correlate with your blue book. B is school board operation. C is general school administration. And I'll make you a copy of this too. Isn't it? But I'll make you a copy of this. It was the second. It was Ms. Ross and Ms. Miller. All right. The next section, and we're going to do them out of order because different departments have, the, like finance has some serious priorities right now that are costing us money. So finance is going to be next, and that's our section D, right, Mr. Porterfield? Finance is D, fiscal management? I want to do finance. Okay, Mr. Dean. I want to work with you. Okay. 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 And Mr. All right, the next section is going to be personnel. I want to be personnel. Is it G? G. Can you do personnel? Remember, Ms. Friars is here. She'll serve on the Friars. Yeah, she'll serve on the Friars. Yeah, I'm going to be fine. Okay, next we're going to, um, I'm going to have to let between, um, it's going to be uh, a choice between instructional and students. The question is, which one is going to be more urgent as we start the school year? I'm going to let. As a mother, I'd love to do students if that's available. Okay. I'll just All stand right. up for that. Where, where's our yeah. students, Mr. Yeah. Um, Porterfield? Students is Jay. And but uh -huh. you can put me wherever you need. Yeah, I will. Mean, but just know because that would be great. Which one is instructional? Is that I? That's I. Not the teacher. And you can put me on I also. Okay. Mr. Porterfield is going to be on instructional. Who else wants to do um, students? Your two moms here. Oh, you got my oh I got you too. Okay. You got That's all right. Go ahead. That's all right. Mr. Portfield, Ms. 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 Allen has something. I was, to say. I was just going to say that uh, we're having a thank a teacher day uh -huh. uh, on May 6th. This is our first official. So, what are y'all going to do as a board? I'm sending cards. Yeah, to what teachers. do you want to do as a board? Well, 
I don't know. I guess I'll think about it and send well, an email. Well, something yeah. with us all together. Yeah, yeah. together. Okay. Even if it's a statement Absolutely. that you all make and um, push it out. Yeah, but something on that day to let them know that you are thinking about them and supporting them. Well, and I encourage board members, which I plan to do, I made a note, is the teachers that my children have and other teachers that I know that are teachers to reach out to them and send them a text or make them a call or send a quick email. I, I agree, but I, let's, let's figure out what can we do that would be meaningful as a board. Um, that was interesting. Yeah. I like that. I just want something to say. It was all with Dr. Glenn. Yes. Oh, mm -hmm. so, yeah, yeah, I Oh, this is declaring it as thank a teacher day. Um, can we send them a thank you note from all of us? Yes, I yes. Could. You could. get most of them you to could do, do, it, do it now. Video. Yeah. And then we could thank them now. Filter it into all the school. Yeah. Us? Yes. <laughs> Yeah. Well, yeah. 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 No, it's not now because yeah. Mary is not here. Oh, yeah. that's right. I think right. It but go ahead here. and get me now. But May um, 6th is, is, is it's it's Tuesday. 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 Ms. Farge is back Monday, and we're all here right now. We could do something on that video. And I can do it. Can, do Ms. can we do it? Can we do something like a certificate of appreciation? Well, that's what I Well, what I was going to do is once you all signed this, was I was going to send it out. Okay. Yeah, we can. I mean, if we don't need something. My thing about that is if I did it, I would have to do it. Yeah. So, I see you do one more day and then front. Yeah. Who wanted to do one in the Doxics area? The plant One for school. That's right. One for school. I don't have I'll do that. I'll do that. Let's just do a video of how we can stream it for the. The horse you know how they do the in service. Okay, good. Because I'm going to need to meet with you all to help me figure out whoever is the facility people. You will be my money. Yeah, yeah. I'm telling you on. So you want to do it? So where do you want? What do you want? I think that's why we're going to do okay. something up here uh, okay. together and say thank you. Yeah, yeah. just something yeah. that can be we just simple. Yeah. Yeah. Here, huh? Or if you want to get around, you want to get around. Hey guys, let's go and get this over. Listen, if you don't need to do that, it's the meeting over. No, no. I'm done. Ooh, done. I, gotta I had my I first three that'll take us through the summer. So okay. we'll, we'll work up. Okay. We'll work. I'll do whatever you need. Okay. <laughs> a second. It has been moved and properly seconded that the meeting be adjourned. Those in favor, let it be known by raising your hand. Motion carried. Six votes. Thank you. It's 1220. Uh uh, the time that the meeting was held. Well, 12, wasn't it? I don't know. I think it was 10 minutes.